here, sitting here having my coffee just for a bit because I gotta go outside. Miss Judy, she's not getting up. Can you see her? <laughs> she's still snuggling. Anyway, um, last night was the first night that I gave the little chicks access to the full coop at night. What I did is I just pulled that little wire cage back just enough so that the little ones can get in and out and the big girls could not get in. So I gotta go out and see how they all did. Oh, I'm getting my fingers crossed. I hope nobody, I hope they didn't kill one of them. You know, I, I'm hoping. All right, let's go see. Oh, somebody's got something. Goodness, girls, there's enough for everybody. Looks like they are enjoying last night's leftovers. They particularly like the meat. They like all of it. Yeah, so these, uh, the mean girls just basically chase them around from food station to food station. No worries, though. These chickens get enough food every night. Their crops are so huge and full. First thing in the morning, they come out and, whoops, sorry, sorry, sweetheart. Um, they're all fat. I mean, they're all flat again, their crops. And then they start the whole process over again. Look at that brown one. I did look into the different colorings of the Asian blacks, and sometimes they will go from being black to having a greenish hue of their feathers to this kind of brownish reddish feathering coloring. Looks like the leghorns like the leftovers too. Yep, there's plenty of them. There's chickpeas, vegetables, meat. I think they like it. I wish they would all just learn to eat together. Oh, I love it when they drink. They were thirsty. All right, so no uh, raccoon activity last night. Over here is where they got in. Um, basically, they had just pulled this part down from the magnet. It had been pulled down, and then this bottom part here, the magnet had been pulled off, and there's another magnet over there. It just, they just pulled it all down, and uh, that's how they got in and out. So that's a weak point over there. I'll figure it out, figure it out but um, it'll be fine. I didn't leave the food out. There's the scattered food that's still on the ground. I guess I need to clean that up. I left the water in there, but I did put the food inside the van and we didn't have any problems last night. <laughs> all right, I let them all out and they all did fine overnight. Nobody killed each other. But when I was filming, I didn't even notice. I had the, the camera turned around the wrong way, so I was shooting at my sweater <laughs> when all those chickens came running down. So you'll have to see that another day. All right, well, um, I do want to show you some things, kind of like a carry-on from yesterday, so let's do that first. Talk about being blessed, you guys. I was driving home from the post office after having opened up all those wonderful gifts, and I drove by Mr. Lucas's brother's house, and he lives on the corner of my street, and in his lawn, I spotted these two beautiful puffball mushrooms. So I went and harvested them, and I knocked on his, look at how big that is, knocked on his door and asked him if it was okay if I could take them, and I said, they're delicious, they're a delicacy, and he says, yeah, go ahead and take them. Look at this one. It's almost shaped like a heart, or a butt. Oh my gosh, as if this day could not get any better. I came home, and I'm not going to show you the label because it has the person's name on it, this was outside. I'm going to open it up and show it to you. It is time. I'm going to do this very carefully. You know what I'm going to do? Well, let's see, just see if I can do it. No, nope, I'm not going to do it because I, I know what's in here and I don't want to damage it. So I'm going to open it up and show it to you. Here we go, folks. Look at this. Can you tell what it is yet? Let me get this other side open. I'm trying not to get my fingers in the camera. Ugh. Look, look at this. This is a 300 watt flexible solar panel. Look at this, look how lightweight it is. See that, see that? Oh my gosh. All right, let me turn it around. I'm gonna look at those cables. It looks like it's the same MC4 connectors as I use for my other one and I've got I have got another connector thingy to collect, 
to connect this to those three over there. Oh my gosh. And look at this. Look at how flexible it is. All right. I think before I'm going to install it, I'm going to do some reading up on this particular solar panel. This is 300 watts. And guess what? This came from Doreen. And there was a lot of drama over this shipment. She paid for three days shipping so that I could get it in time to keep the chickens warm. So I could set up a little station out there. Um, and for some reason, the, the U.S. Postal Service messed it up. So she has sent me another 300 watt solar panel. And she had told me, well, just send this one back when you get it. Um, or send the other one back that's going U.S. Postal Service to the post office box. And uh, send this one. I can't even talk. I just, I'm so excited. I cannot believe this thing looks so slick. Well, anyway, yesterday, at the last minute, she just said, you know what, just keep both of them. Do you guys understand what that means? That means, in addition to my three 100-watt panels that are connected to three 100-amp-hour sealed AGM batteries, I'm going to have 600 more watts of solar to add to that. And then don't forget, I've got the little Harbor Freight that's hooked up to the smaller battery. So I am going to think about how is the, what's the best way to do this. Um, I may just go ahead and hook the 600 up to the other 300. Um, I, I just, I mean, I, my mind is so freaking blown right now. So that is my next big project, guys. So oh, you know what I'm going to have to do, too? I'm going to have to use all that stuff that the lovely Miss Donna gave me and rebuild those, the frame for those, and make it big enough to add these, this, the both of them. And here's the deal. These are so light. They're not going to add any extra weight. Oh, my goodness. I can't. I just, I just can't believe this. Thank you, Doreen. Oh. All right, I have to get to figuring out how I'm going to redo my whole solar. This day just keeps getting better and better. I am going to show you the plant that the lovely Miss Teresa gave me, and it's going to blow your mind. I can't believe it. This is the plant that Teresa sent me. It arrived in perfect condition. It's not wilted at all. And look at it. It's a coffee plant. I have absolutely no idea how to raise coffee plants, so I'm going to take this off and read it and figure it out. This is from Rocket Farms, Plants for Living Plant Shop. But first, coffee. Coffee plant. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's turn this over and read it. Sorry, my fingernails. I've been digging in the dirt, as usual. Tending to your new plant will bring you companionship for years, and research suggests that it will also boost your empathy for others. <laughs> but... First, time to water your coffee plant. Okay, keep soil most moist, but don't overwater. Keep saucer dry. Place in a bright location with indirect light, 60 degrees Fahrenheit and above. Go ahead and transplant into a well-draining soil when it grow outgrows its original pot. Collect all of your favorite varieties. Okay, alrighty, I am going to have to research this more so I don't screw this up. I have to know every single little fact and detail. Look at this cute little thing it's in. Let me see if I can get this out. Okay, so it's in this little pot. I need to learn how to not kill this. If I kill this, I am going to be crushed. The only concern I have is the, the temperature, but uh, I think I'm going to be able to keep it at the right temperature until it needs to be transplanted. I think it could almost be transplanted right now. My goodness, Leghorns. It's a beautiful plant, so I'm going to water it a little bit and just take good care of it, and hopefully, I don't know, hopefully I can keep it alive. Thank you so much, Teresa. That is a fantastic idea for a plant to give me, so let's just keep our fingers crossed that I don't kill it. Today is the first day that I am going to let these chickens, the four white girls, the four leg horns out to roam around. I've got Cody and Hannah here hey. to help supervise. So, <sighs> Cody, you want to open that door? See how they do. Yep. There you go, and just swing it all the way back. 
And let's just I see what they do. One of them perched up and, and just kind of like walk way back and just let them come out and do what they're going to do. <sighs> Gosh, I hope this goes well. They're going to have plenty of opportunities to find bugs. Hopefully the third one will come out. Look at how big they've gotten. Yes, I have to clean up that trash over there. That was just all stuff I was using to, you know, on the inside of the coop, some of the boxes and whatnot. All right, the last chicken is coming out. So we're just going to watch them. See what they do. Yeah, I definitely need to pick that stuff up today. Judy's inside the house. I didn't want that extra added problem. All right, so we're just going to watch them for a little while, see how far they go. Let's just move back so that they can go either direction. And um, I'm not going to feel the whole thing. We're just going to see what happens. Now, this is Cody's idea. Since the girls are all integrated at night, the mean girls, <laughs> the leghorns get up here and roost and they won't let the black girls roost. And even if they do, they're going to put them on this bottom rung and I'm afraid that the, they'll poop on them. So we found this piece of wood and I had one idea for it. It didn't work. So Cody had this idea and it totally works and it's solid. It's not going anywhere. So now they've got another roost that I can even take down and put back up easily if I need to clean the bedding and whatnot. So... Right on, Cody. <laughs> the girls did really good free ranging out there. We were all three watching them. They stayed out only about an hour. Uh, we had to kind of cut it a little bit short. Hannah wasn't feeling well and had to go home. But uh, we they, we got them all back into the coop, and they they seem to know where their home is. So I think I'm going to be able to do this. I I don't think it's going to be any problem at all. We kept Judy inside while we were doing it, just because I didn't want that extra added stress to have to deal with. The next time I'm just going to let them stay out for as long as they want and just stay out here and watch them and see if they go back in themselves. And they were. They were going back in, in and out of the little cage there. I had the, the doors that facing the inside of the yard um, closed so they knew where they needed to go in and out. So I think this is going to really work out great. Anyhow, you guys, I think that's all I've got for you today. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.